Hi friends, Dr. Triya here. Welcome to another neurology video where today we are going over the topic hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is an abnormal accumulation of CSF in the intracranial space. There is an imbalance between either CSF production or clearance. This causes increased intracranial pressure inside the skull, which further causes progressive enlargement of the head. Normal amount of CSF is about 150 ml. CSF is mainly produced by a structure called choroid plexus in the lateral third and fourth ventricles. CSF flows from the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle through the intraventricular foramen of Monroe. Third and fourth ventricle are further connected to each other by cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius. CSF then flows into the subarachnoid space through the foramen of Lushka and Majendi. Absorption of CSF into the bloodstream takes place in the superior sagittal sinus through structure called arachnoid villi. Communicating hydrocephalus is a condition that results when the arachnoid villi are unable to adequately reabsorb CSF in case of intraventricular hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Infectious process such as meningitis may also render the arachnoid villi to be non-function, may also be due to over production of CSS. This is a rare condition and usually associated with choroid plexus papilloma or choroid plexus carcinoma. While looking at the non-communicating hydrocephalus, it is a condition that results when the ventricular system does not communicate with arachnoid villi due to some obstruction in the normal pathways of CSF flow. Consequently, CFS is produced in the ventricular system but cannot flow to the arachnoid villi to be reabsorbed. Such obstruction can occur when pathways are blocked by congenital abnormalities of brain, tumor or cyst, inflammation from infection or any other condition that interfere with the patency of these pathways. Congenital hydrocephalus is one of the commonest congenital anomalies of central nervous system. It is present at birth and may be caused by events that occur during fetal development or as a res result of genetic abnormalities. This type of hydrocephalus is developed by intrauterine infection mainly rubella, toxoplasmosis and CMB, tumors, intracranial hemorrhage, congenital malformation of brain, and malformation of arachnoid villi. Acquired hydrocephalus develops after the brain and it is caused by inflammation, trauma, tumors, space occupying lesions like tuberculoma, subdural hematoma, or abscess, glioma, ependymoma, astrocytoma, choroid plexus papilloma, or pseudotumor cerebri. In case of connected tissue disorders such as Hurler syndrome and achondroplasia, between infancy and older age, hydrocephalus can cause a range of neurological and other symptoms such as an unusually large head, a rapid in increase in the size of head, a bulging soft spot on the top of the head that is called bulging anterior fontanelle, eyes fixed downward called sun setting of eyes, shiny scalp with prominent scalp veins, poor feeding, seizures, vomiting, lethargy and irritability. A sign that detects hydrocephalus called the MAC1 sign that is also known as a crackpot sign tapping on the skull near the junction of frontal, temporal and parietal bones yields an unusually resonant sound like a crackpot, indicative of separated suture due to raised intracranial tension. The hydrocephalus is diagnosed through a clinical examination, positive crass illumination of infant head. That is, in a dark room, the head of the newborn with possible hydrocephalus will light up when the procedure is done. Variety of imaging, neuroimaging such as cranial US CT scan and MRI. Medical management of hydrocephalus directed towards reduced intracranial pressure, prevention and management of complication, managing the problem which is caused by the symptoms. It include the use of IV fluids, antibiotics, anti-emetic agents, use of osmotic diuretics and loop diuretics to reduce the production of CSF. There is a little use of medication in hydrocephalus. Some studies have shown that acetazolamide or furosemide may be acceptable CSF fluid reduction but these medications are currently used on, only on a temporary basis. Both drugs act to reduce production of CSF by the choroid plexus. The standard treatment for hydrocephalus is a shunt placement. Shunts are usually placed in the lateral ventricle and can have one of three different drainage points. The most common drainage point is the peritoneum which is connected to the shunt with subcutaneous tubing. This is known as a ventricular peritoneal shunt. Many causes of hydrocephalus exist the number of a treatment is limited. In some cases with tumors and infection, resolving underlying condition will resolve the hydrocephalus. So that's all about today's video. I hope you all understood and learned well. Please let me know what other topics you would like to learn from me. Till that time, take care of yourself. Study hard, study smart. Bye.